This video is sponsored by Zach Haji, Zachary Hayes, and DJ the Lazy Gamer. Hey, what's up, Poster Fam? So, obviously, this video has a confusing title when looking at its time of release, as we are close to being over two times the size this scenario is meant to celebrate. But this is actually because I had had it in my head to do this story as a 30,000 subscriber special for so long that when it came back up as a possible one shot, there was no other title I could think of to give it, though I did have to redo its thumbnail, allowing me to rethink the story a good bit. And while I'm aware that there are other channels like my own which have covered this topic, I must admit that I have not seen them all, though I am sure this one will be different and hopefully and definitively the best. So here's my take on what if Hinata was on Team 7. And by the way, if you want to secure part 2, let's get this video to 1500 likes. Now, first things first, we need to identify our initial change. I've decided it should come in the flashback featured in Naruto The Last in which Naruto attempts to rescue Hinata from local bullies who were picking on her for being a Hyuga. In the original timeline, this would be the first time Hinata and Naruto would meet. But here, this is the first time Hinata will be inspired by Naruto. Because the change I want to make is, Naruto really, really doesn't want to lose this fight to these bullies. Maybe he knows the kids already and is sick of their attitudes, or maybe he's just motivated to make sure they never do this again. Regardless, his motivation causes him to barely hesitate before grabbing his defunct clone after he made it and clumsily throwing it into the face of the leader of the trio, hard enough to make him fall on his back between his friends. Naruto then slides his goggles over his eyes and puts on a big grin as he restates that his name is Naruto Uzumaki and he'll be the Hokage as they rush him and begin to gang up on him, but he definitely doesn't get beat up with one punch this time. He does however get pretty roughed up, dirty and exhausted, but his opponents are triply so and when all is said and done, he is the winner who is flat on his back in the cold snow, as he not looked on awestruck, upset by the violence and very worried for Naruto's well-being. He'd really grit his teeth and dug in tenaciously and pulled out a win that she didn't think he could take. It was something she felt like she could never do. Naruto needed rest, but he also wanted to finish looking cool. And so, he offered the girl his messy and likely bloody scarf before limping away only to pass out a little further away in the snow. A little later, after Hinata had tried to drag the boy for help, she'd be found by her older Hyuga clan branch member escort, who she convinced to carry him to the hospital after getting her home. That night, Hinata stares at the scarf she'd been given and thanks to the harsh training she'd had to endure with her father already. Could she possibly get strong with that boy Naruto? Not just strong in the sense of being strong, but strong enough to endure a lot when you're outmatched and to keep going when you're way past finish. It makes her very curious, so when she asks her escort what he knows about the boy and if it would be possible for them to thank him, the branch member would direct her back to her father. Hayashi at the mention of Naruto just insists the boy is an orphan with a behavioral issue so the villagers are quick to anger with him, and they dislike him for it, just to get her off the subject. He realizes that if she's already being bullied for being a Hyuga in the first place, she doesn't necessarily need to be associated with the likes of a Jinchuriki. And beyond that, he wants her to focus on her training. The fact that it was a Hyuga that got a medical attention in the first place should be enough, much to Hinata's dismay. Naruto would wake up in the hospital a little later and have his bills covered by the Hokage's estate as usual along with a lecture from Hiros and himself, who would admit to being rather surprised Naruto was able to hold his own against three older academy students. He then uses this as a teaching moment to explain to Naruto if he studies hard, he'll be able to get a lot more out of that latent potential he's just seen, which is something he's going to need, because having won this fight, or at least fought back more than he did in canon, is going to garner Naruto more ill will in the village and the academy than he did in canon. The kids he fought and their family is now holding a personal grudge against him on top of him being the most hated person in the Leaf Village by default was not a good combination. Meaning as the going gets more and more rough, Naruto is going to have to get tougher. A few days later, Hinata begins to spar with her father again, and as usual, even when he is holding back, his training is very, very difficult for a child her age. And as such, she is injured and knocked down multiple times, though with each, Hayashi orders her to stand once again while his younger brother and nephew watch tensely. Finally, after watching Hinata take more than 1 minute and 30 seconds to get back to her feet for the 10th time that morning and hearing his daughter huff and puff pathetically, Hayashi grew so irritated he didn't trust himself to hold back anymore and dismiss Hinata for the day. Hazashi breathed a sigh of relief, as usually Hinata wouldn't show even this much nasty and would have long ago given up or even began crying. While she was sniveling and wet eyed, it was clear she had been digging through the pain today whilst thinking about the little orphan blonde hero who was able to do the same in front of her. The girl was motivated, and his older brother didn't seem as impressed about it as he was. In fact, he didn't think he was going about her training the right way at all, 
but he was in no position to voice that, being a branch member. Watching this though, refocus Hizashi's agitation towards his brother and not Hinata. Actually, no, not even at Hayashi himself, as in a way, he was also a victim in this situation. His agitation was refocused on the oppressive Hyuga system, which forced them into caste anyway. A warm feeling of respect and pride sparked in Hazashi's heart as he saw his niece in the face of hardship that same oppressive system forced upon her, hanging on and enduring with all the tenacity of any clan head. No, a Hokage. However, just when he and Neji thought it was over, the usually demure girl squeaked for her father to give her another drill, stopping the clan head in his tracks before he rebuked her as too weak to go further today and told her they would continue tomorrow before walking away regardless, leaving Hinata to finally collapse and cry as she caught her breath. It was obvious, but that was really hard for her. Getting back up over and over ate away at one's willpower rather quickly, and her father's cold and unimpressed glare only sapped her quicker. Even so, she felt like she'd accomplished something regardless. In a way, she made her father run away from her in this instance. As she was still ready to train, this meant that he gave up due to exhaustion. So, she'd whisper to herself that she'd won, trying to take a small win from this, and soon, she'd feel a hand pat her head, only to look up to her uncle, who had a very warm smile. Though made no mistake, this would be very inappropriate for a branch family member to do. Hazashi, though, isn't thinking about his clan role. He's thinking about his role in the family of these two children who are the future of it. He congratulates Hinata for her victory, and politely asks that she would be interested in hearing some constructive criticism on her form. To which, Hinata would go wide-eyed and nod excitedly. Her uncle currently spoke with such kindness and warmness that she felt like he could tell her anything and she would take it just fine. It reminded her of the boy in the woods, actually. Having Neji act out everything he said, Hazashi would direct Hinata exactly where she had been going wrong and what she could do to do better. With it given in this way, she now has more psychological encouragement and fundamental growth in a really positive manner, and these three family members realize they may have just participated in an actual bonding moment. More so between Hinata and her uncle, but still, this would be a moment where Neji realizes the main family really isn't all that bad, and there's no real difference between them. And so, Hinata's road to getting generally stronger and a little more confident begins. Hayashi would quickly begin to notice improvements in his daughter much more rapidly than he did before. As her technique came along, he began having her conduct more strenuous physical training before that of which she'd undergo in the academy soon, and he would continue to increase the difficulty of his spars with her. Then soon, his second daughter would be of age to begin sparring with her, and they would compete for the title of clan head. This was another reason some would be happy to see her grow. It would make that decision much easier on the clan itself. Usually after those very harsh training sessions, Neji, Hazashi, or one of the other would help the girl train a bit afterwards, helping Hinata to maintain a steady growth and confidence in her abilities, and soon, herself. She isn't as shy necessarily anymore but I do think she would still be very, very quiet and like her peace and kindness from others. She even comes to take some pride in gaining the respect and encouragement of Neji and her uncle, motivating her to secure the same from her father and show him her true strength one day, surpassing him even, and remaining all the while as sweet as her mother was. And she would begin to progress towards that goal much quicker than she did in canon. Honestly, getting to the point that she was in the original story at this point, much faster so that she can already begin surpassing that. If you haven't guessed, in this timeline, because of what we're doing, Hinata gets much more of a main character role. In fact, by the time the Cloud sends his fake ambassador to kidnap Hinata, it is at a point when someone grabbing her out of bed in the middle of the night ought to be careful or risk having one of their kidneys blown apart due to a startled and unguided gentle fist strike in panic, as what happened to him. This means that Cloud Ninja will be caught and would need medical attention causing the Cloud's plans to be revealed, and they would likely suffer whatever punishment they'd have to for breaking the treaty as well. And already, we have way more changes than we already did. One being, Hinata as any prodigy in the village is now hailed and praised as a hero of the leaf for her action, single-handedly snuffing out a devious plot by a foreign land. It's also such an impressive feat, and because of the bargaining power that it gives him, the Hokage is very much considering giving Hinata a very special honor. Seeing as how she technically defeated a very powerful ninja from a foreign country, hears and finds no issue in stating the girl Guinea level, and thus, he is willing to award her the title of Elite Guinea very early on and without going to the academy. Kinda like with Kakashi or Itachi getting very, very early promotions just to the most logical extreme here. Of course, Hayashi would be shocked and he would definitely feel some pride in this, and would definitely congratulate Hinata himself as this was above standard by all means. 
but I also believe he would realize Hinata was not actually at the level to accept such honors. There was just no way he could endorse his daughter receiving her headband before her older, more talented cousin, Neji. And remember, if Neji's been helping Hinata in secret in this timeline, that becomes a benefit to him as well, as well as now having his father alive going forward. He's going to get a lot of benefit from both these things and advance a lot faster as well. Something the clan would love to see as the Uchiha currently boasts his mighty prodigies, Itachi and Shisui, who at this point would be ending their getting careers already and moving up in rank fast at their age. Hayashi is however shocked when his daughter quietly tells him in front of her younger sister that she plans to refuse the Hokage's offer, as it wouldn't feel right for her. It took a little courage to tell him so straightforwardly, but she is rewarded with his succinct and immediate support, explaining to her that if she doesn't want to accept the offer, then she can simply go up and thank the village on behalf of all the Hyuga, as that was a simple act that would go a long way in making the clan happy. When the Hokage calls his ceremony and calls across the village his offer to give Hinata her headband early, as he did to some of the Uchiha who had proven themselves, the girl would actually project her voice in a very calm and genuine tone while still sounding overall quiet. She gratefully declines the offer for the earlier mentioned reasons and explains the situation as she saw it. This was an accident, and she didn't actually even want to hurt anyone, but she was glad to have helped her village regardless. She wanted everyone to get along and protect everyone else. Finally, she happily reaffirms the Hyuga's pledge to always be there to protect the Leaf, and sincerely thanks the village for its honor, both from the main and the branch families. Though she is unaware of it, this phrasing makes the branch family feel very appreciated and acknowledged, while irritating some of the Hyuga elders. Meanwhile, the village is shocked by this. Certainly, they expected the power greedy clan had to take such an offer. Less so do they expect such a sweet and genuine display of earnest honesty from the little Hugo heiress. She sounded and looked like an angel, and so was given the nickname of the Leafs Lavender-Eyed Angel by her new fan club, as this would also be a very big event for her generation and her contemporaries. In fact, through the crowd, she notices one of them of particular interest, with a spiky head of blonde hair. This would be her first time seeing Naruto since that day in the woods and it made her feel very good to see him staring up at her with admiration. In fact, it made her heart skip a beat. In that moment, all the pain and discomfort she had endured to get there had felt more than worth it. And so, Hinata becomes a village famous prodigy. Years later, we'd have our Uchiha massacre, and this event would also be something Sasuke is influenced by. To see the Hyuga thrive while his clan is in pieces would definitely put some strong feelings on Neji and Hinata and I think he'd be aware of both his rivals much earlier this timeline. Meaning our Avenger also begins to benefit from some accelerated growth from his canon counterpart. Meanwhile, Naruto would be on another attempt at the Academy, now inspired by Hinata and likely not recognizing her. But the clone Jutsu keeps tripping him up due to his chakra capacity. The issue is Naruto has gotten to be such a good fighter that his Taijutsu scores are perfect due to going undefeated in the spars. He's just become a damage spun, and is getting really good at dealing harsh blows, far too powerful for any average academy student to take, and he'd apparently gotten way too sturdy for them to have any hope of taking him down themselves. So while he does end up being the dead last of two shinobi classes before his actual graduation class, he's gotten so good at the punchy part of the academy that he gets his own nickname, the dead last demon. But here's where we're gonna leave our story off for right now, plus with your fam. We have our Angel, Avenger, and Demon entering the Academy at the same time, finally. Both Hinata and Sasuke have already grown past their canon counterparts, earning them the spots of Rookie and Kunoichi of the year, and Naruto is said to be the dead last again, so the irony for us is knowing where the scenario is going. Though there are some moments ahead I would like to allow to breathe and stand on their own, so be sure to smash through that like goal if you want to see a part 2 and have this series continue subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next part or the next part of one of the other awesome series I release. Trust me, I make the best what it's on YouTube. Thanks to you guys for watching and thank you to our channel members and awesome patrons. In Hero Tier, Lone Wolf McQuaid, Stefan Consfrant, Superior, and Samuel Viveros. In Shinobi Tier, The True Black Star, and Shannon Roberts. In Z Warrior Tier, Narku. In Beyond Tier, Crimson Manifesto, Don, Pizza15X, and Knuckles OX. And in the Plus Ultra tier, DJ the Lazy Gamer, Zach Haji, and Zachary Hayes. 
And thank you guys so, so much for directly supporting the channel. It means the world to me and enables me to do a lot of really cool stuff, like hire really cool artists, get voice actors on, and we have goals on Patreon, like once we reach a certain number, I really, really want to hire on a full-time editor so I can be getting out my videos way, way quicker. And so just when I'm in a position where I can't really edit my own videos too well, that'll help us still get out content. So needless to say, Patreon support is pretty important right now. If you're curious or considering becoming a Patreon yourself, check out the links in the description below or search patreon.com slash puzzleultraman. And once again, thanks for watching. Be sure to take care of yourselves and the world around you. Remember, black lives matter, trans rights are human rights, happy Pride Month, and I love you. See you guys next time. Oh, and always, go beyond plus ultra.